ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣೇಶ ಶಾರದ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಸಿಂಧೂರಾರುಣ ವಿಗ್ರಹಾಂ ತ್ರಿನಯನ ಮಾಣಿಕ್ಯ ಮೌಲಿ ಸ್ಫುರ ತಾರಾನಾಯಕ ಶೇಖರ ಸ್ಮಿತ ಮುಖೀ ಆಪೀನ ಮಕ್ಷೋರುಹಾಂ ಪಾಣಿಭ್ಯಾಮಲಿಪೂರ್ಣ ರತ್ನ ಚಷಕಂ ರಕ್ತೋತ್ಪಲಂ ಬಿಭ್ರತಿ ಸೌಮ್ಯಾಂ ರತ್ನ ಘಟಸ್ಥ ರಕ್ತ ಚರಣ ಧ್ಯಾತ್ ಪರಾಂ ಅಂಬಿಕಾ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಆನ್ ಲಲಿತೋಪಾಖ್ಯಾನ In the previous chapter, we have seen how from the Mahayaga, Devi Lalita appeared and she recreated Trimurtis and all the Devatas, all living beings and all Lokas which are offered as a sacrifice in that Mahayaga and she recreated all of them while sitting on the lap of Kameshwara looking deep into the eyes of Kameshwara. and then naturally since sri lalita had appeared to kill bandasura ill omen started appearing in the shunya nagara where bandasura is located on seeing the samvit spanda or vibration due to the approach of sri lalita devi's force for battle against bandasura every dhanama was filled with anxiety and four boardings of disaster the city of danavas expand on mahendra mountain on the banks of maharnava lake was named shunyakanagara mean the city of illusion bandasura ever lived in this city with his trusted brothers vishukra and vishanga and the rest of the rest of his family this city extending over a hundred yojana now shuddered and shook while its asura population quailed and trembled with premonitions of utter destruction evil omens filled the atmosphere from moment to moment the city got clouded as if by smoke and without any warning whatever there rained meteoric showers from out of the darkening firmament the severe earthquake most untimely shook the city at its roots as harbingers of evil crows and kites sat at the tip of the flag staffs or standards of shunyakanagara asuras could not see the face of the sun for their sight became dazed and dim while their heads seemed to turn around round and round with giddiness there arose a harsh sound as of a voice from the firmament striking terror into the hearts of the asuras all the directions looked dusty and distorted with smoke and flames the daitya ladies without any cause whatever allowed their dress and ornaments to slide loose from their bodies and began to weep and shout for help the mirrors lost their luster the shields the flags the standards and all weapons of war including all ornaments and gems became lusterless and filled with dust weeping and general uproar burst forth with harsh words and abusive language when they saw their homes crumbling to nothing before their very eyes the frogs began to croak at the hidden sun and water turned bloody red in color witnessing such catastrophes both on the ground and in the firmament the populace of the town ran in terror to the palace of their lord bandasura listening to their tales banda himself lost courage though filled with rage and hasten to the darbar hall where he collected his brave brothers and ministers together for consultation there seated on his throne bedecked with rare gems and ornaments bandasura shone resplendent in all his great glory 
the darbar hall measured one yojana in extent and its throne was elevated so as to be visible to one and all seated on either side of him were vishukra and vishanga who though valiant vanquishers and terrorizers of the three worlds were ever subservient and most loyal to their elder brother lord bhandasura all the daitya lords assembled in the hall rose up one by one and pronouncing their names saluted him humbly and looked into his august eyes ready to obey the slightest movement in them each resumed his seat in obedience and with great respect while bandasura remained in august and silent expectation thus in this chapter we have seen while devi lalita appeared from the chidagne kunda recreating the whole creation filled with the rasa at the same time ill woman started appearing in the shunyaka nagara because what is now will going to happen is the complete destruction of the city along with killing of bandasura and his two brothers vishunga vishanga and vishukra along with all other daityas only the time is remaining namaste sharada devi kashmir puravasini tvam aham prarthaye nityam vidyadanan chadehi me goodbye